Who's cheating on their spouse? Using campaign funds to cover it up? Having children with the mistress? And who stuck around for this mess? God bless America, these politicians treated their SOs like trash. Stick around to find out who's who. Let's start with perhaps the most notoriously awful political husband of all time, former President Bill Clinton. In the early 90s, the former Arkansas governor was hugely popular thanks to his centrist policies that appealed to both Republicans and hardcore Democrats. During his time in office, the economy experienced its longest peacetime expansion, NAFTA was enacted, and Ruth Bader Ginsburg was appointed to the Supreme Court. But many of his accomplishments were overshadowed in 1997 by the revelation that he'd been having an ongoing affair with a White House intern, Monica Lewinsky. According to CNN, Lewinsky and Clinton had been involved since at least 1995, shortly after she began working for the president. But it wasn't until 98 that news outlets broke the story. That was six months after White House staffer Linda Tripp began taping her conversations with Lewinsky, who detailed her illicit relationship. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Clinton flat out denied the affair, a trial began, and a few months later, Clinton was impeached. Despite the drama and the pain he caused her, former Secretary of State and future presidential candidate Hillary Clinton stood by her man. The two are still married, and in the years since the affair, Hillary has rarely spoken about the incident. But in a 2020 docuseries for Hulu, the former First Lady did admit to feeling the pain. I was so, you know, personally just hurt. New York State Congressman Anthony Weiner, who was married to Hillary Clinton campaign staffer Huma Abedin, was caught in a sexting scandal that rocked the country in the early 2010s. The drama began in May 2011 when a suggestive picture of Weiner's crotch made its way onto his Twitter feed. He initially denied he had anything to do with the image, but less than a week later he admitted the picture was taken and sent by him and that he had engaged in a number of online relationships. Over the next few years, the pattern would repeat itself. An outlet would report on explicit photos or messages sent by Weiner, he would deny it, then he would ultimately cop to it. Initially, Aberdeen stood by her husband, telling the press, I love him, I have forgiven him, I believe in him, and as we have said from the beginning, we are moving forward. But she changed her tune in 2016. After Weiner sent a suggestive picture to a woman that also featured his son, Aberdeen announced she was leaving the marriage. Weiner was then convicted of inappropriate sexual conduct with a minor in 2017. Four years later, during a sit-down with CBS Sunday Morning, Aberdeen revealed that she's moved past her anger toward her ex, sharing, I can't live in that space anymore. I tried that. It almost killed me. In 2008, New York Governor Elliot Spitzer made global news when the New York Times revealed that he was involved with an online prostitution ring. Initially, it was believed that he had elicited the services of a sex worker just once. But as the drama unraveled, it became clear that he had spent as much as $80,000 on encounters with multiple women over several years. It was all especially shocking since he had prosecuted two or more prostitution rings during his time as New York Attorney General, and had come down hard on them both. Less than a week after the scandal broke, Spitzer resigned from his post as governor. With his wife Silda by his side, he stated, The remorse I feel will always be with me. At the time, it seemed that his marriage might weather the storm. Apparently, just like the public, Silda had also been blindsided by the affair. But five years later, in 2013, the couple finally called it quits. In a statement, they said, We regret that our marital relationship has come to an end. We have agreed not to make any other public statement on this subject. Another one-time Democrat darling, North Carolina Senator and two-time presidential nominee John Edwards saw his bright political career come crashing down. In 2007, the National Enquirer alleged that Edwards had been having an affair with one of his campaign staffers for at least 18 months. And it was all happening while his wife Elizabeth was undergoing treatment for late-stage breast cancer. The story's false. It's completely untrue. Not true. At the time, Edwards called the allegations, quote, false absolute nonsense. However, investigators Investigative journalists proved that he was lying. Making matters worse, his mistress, Riel Hunter, was pregnant and Edwards was the father. I did an awful, awful lot that was wrong. 
The news was devastating for Edward's wife. As a witness described Elizabeth's reaction in court via ABC News, she collapsed into a ball. Her primary concern was the family. She didn't want it to become public so the kids wouldn't have to deal with it. In the end, Elizabeth separated from John, but she died before she could file for divorce. John was also charged with six counts of misusing campaign funds. He allegedly spent over $900,000 of campaign money on covering up the affair, but he was not found guilty on all counts due to one acquittal and a mistrial. Today, he co parents his daughter Quinn with his former mistress. Occasionally, bad behavior flies under the radar for years before it goes public. Such was the case with Arnold Schwarzenegger. The day after the former California governor left office in 2011, it was revealed that he had previously engaged in an affair with the family's housekeeper, Mildred Baina. The two crossed the line back in 1996, according to The Sun, and the affair resulted in a son, Joseph, who's now in his 20s. Two months after the story made national headlines, Schwarzenegger's wife of 25 years, Maria Shriver, filed for divorce. She had learned about the affair just before the public did, but she has never really spoken out about the scandal outside of one statement she made in 2011. She told Us Weekly, This is a painful and heartbreaking time. As a mother, my concern is for the children. I ask for compassion, respect, and privacy as my children and I try to rebuild our lives and heal. I will have no further comment. She did not deserve that, That's I can tell you. And that's why I, f I felt always terrible about the whole thing. For his part, Schwarzenegger admitted his error, telling the outlet, I take full responsibility for the hurt I have caused. I have apologized to Maria, my children, and my family. I am truly sorry. President John F. Kennedy famously had affairs with a number of women while he was married to Jackie. Some of these affairs, like the one with Judith Exner, are well documented and certain. Others, like the possible fling with Marilyn Monroe, have never been confirmed. People magazine came up with six women in total, from White House staffers to DC socialites. And in 2021, yet another woman claimed to airmail that she had been involved with the former president when she was in college. So how did the former first lady feel about her husband's frequent stepping out? As one of her biographers told People, she knew what was going on. She wasn't naive to it. They did have many conversations about it, and she did tell him that she was sick of it and she didn't like it. While the infidelities did lead Jackie to consider divorcing JFK on multiple occasions, she never took that step. As another biographer told the outlet, she came from a world where that's what men did, and it was accepted. Former President Donald Trump has also had several affairs over the years. Famously, his first marriage to Ivana ended when his affair with model Marla Maples became public. According to People magazine, Trump and Maples had been secretly seeing each other for a while, and while Ivana wasn't happy about it, she chose to ignore it. That is, until a 1989 trip to Aspen when she learned that her husband had invited his mistress along. Following a confrontation at the top of a ski slope, the couple filed for divorce, leaving Donald free to marry Maples. But that relationship didn't last either. By 2005, Trump was remarried to his third wife, Melania. Less than six months after the birth of their son, Barron, in 2006, Trump was allegedly having affairs with at least two women, adult film star Stormy Daniels and Playboy model Karen McDougal. While Melania never really addressed the allegations, she did tell ABC News, I'm a mother and a first lady, and I have much more important things to think about and to do. In April 2018, Rudy Giuliani and his wife Judith Nathan announced they were going their separate ways. At the time, they didn't provide details, but page six revealed that Giuliani had been having an affair with hospital administrator Maria Rosa Ryan. The former NYC mayor tried to defend his bad behavior by claiming he and his wife were, quote, in effect, separated. But Nathan countered, My husband's denial of the affair with the married Mrs. Ryan is as false as his claim that we were separated when he took up with her. We proved that Red Sox fans and Yankee fans can be friends off the field. But perhaps Nathan shouldn't have been as shocked by the affair as she was. Her own relationship allegedly began when Giuliani was married to his first wife, Donna Hanover. But this incident stands out because he reportedly spent almost $300,000 in six months on his mistress. The couple's divorce was finalized in 2019. Franklin D. Roosevelt was generally well-liked, but he carried on a long, well-documented affair with Lucy Rutherford. He actually met Rutherford through his wife, Eleanor, who employed her as a social secretary. It is believed that the president and Rutherford began their affair in 1916 and were found out by Eleanor in 1918. 
According to one biographer via the New York Times, Eleanor was willing to get a divorce. Realizing that a public separation would ruin both of their lives, they remained married, but with Eleanor's specific conditions. Those high apple pie in the sky hopes. FDR had to quit his philandering ways and be booted from the marriage bed. Well, FDR stuck to separate beds, but he didn't stop seeing Rutherford. And when FDR died in 1945, it was Rutherford, not Eleanor, who was by his side. In 2011, Minnesota politician Amy Koch became the first woman to serve as the Senate Majority Leader in her home state. But it all came crashing down in December of that year when it was revealed that she had engaged in an inappropriate relationship with her staffer, Michael Broadcorb. The details of the affair have remained murky over the years, but the scandal cost Koch both her job and her marriage. While many of the men on our list managed to hold on to their political positions and reputations, Koch lost face both personally and professionally. Her colleagues even seemed to have been the ones leaking details to the press. Koch also spoke out in the wake of former Congresswoman Katie Hill's resignation scandal over an inappropriate relationship with a campaign staffer. Koch claimed her own situation wasn't handled the way it would have been if she were a man, telling PBS, Yes, I, I think it would have gone down differently. Despite his entire platform being built on upholding America's moral values, Newt Gingrich is no family man. The former Republican congressman has cheated on two of his former wives. In a 2007 interview with Christian thought leader James Dobson, Gingrich admitted that his relationship with second wife, Marianne Ginther, began while he was still married to his first wife, Jackie Batley. It wasn't the first affair he had during their 18-year marriage, but it was the one that drove them apart. Allegedly, he discussed divorce terms with Batley as she was hospitalized, recovering from cancer. Then, several years into his marriage with Ginther, Gingrich began yet another affair, this time with congressional aide Callista Bissick, all while he publicly condemned then-President Bill Clinton for stepping out on Hillary. And he always called me at night. He always ended with, I love you. Well, she was there listening. After Ginther found out about his indiscretions, Gingrich reportedly asked her for an open marriage, per ABC News. When she rejected his proposal, the two split. After their divorce, Gingrich would go on to marry Bissick and become the GOP's spokesman for strong family values. In 2009, South Carolina Governor Mark Sanford's office announced that he'd be out of reach for a few days because he was hiking the Appalachian Trail. In reality, the politician had flown to Argentina on taxpayer money to meet up with his mistress, Maria, a woman he'd met years earlier. The lie was designed to keep his wife, Jenny Sanford, from knowing his whereabouts. A few months earlier, Jenny had learned of his affair when she found a bunch of letters between the mistress and her husband. Sanford later wrote about it all in his book, Two Roads Diverged. He and his then-wife had entered counseling and resolved to work through the issue. But Sanford, unsure of what he wanted to do, visited the other woman in order to figure it out. I mean, it was awful on so many levels. Sanford then called a press conference as soon as he re-entered the country, announcing his actual whereabouts and his affair. At the time, the wedded couple tried to work it out, but by 2010, they had divorced. In 2018, Jenny remarried. And as for Sanford, he was briefly engaged to his Argentinian lover, but the two broke up before they ever made it down the aisle. While in office, Lyndon B. Johnson was leading the country in fighting both the Cold War and the Vietnam War. But behind the scenes, he was involved in a third war with his wife, Claudia Lady Bird Taylor. Johnson is known to have had at least three affairs while married to Lady Bird, one with Alice Glass, one with California Congresswoman Helen Douglas, and one with his secretary, Mary Margaret Wiley. It's believed that Lady Bird knew about the affairs, and The Guardian claimed she was embarrassed by his indiscretions. But these weren't the only injustices Lady Bird had to suffer. According to Texas Monthly, the former president was beastly in his treatment of his wife in general. He reportedly told embarrassing stories about her in public and was demanding of her at home. He was also controlling and demeaning about her appearance, often asking her why she didn't look like other, more attractive women. Bob Packwood spent his years in the U.S. Senate making a name for himself as a pro-woman, moderate Republican. He brought the first abortion legalization bill to the Senate and voted against the installment of Clarence Thomas in the Supreme Court. So in 1992, when the Washington Post published a front-page story detailing the dozens of sexual harassment claims levied against the senator by women in his offices, the public was stunned. In 1995, the Senate voted to expel Packwood, and hours later, he resigned. That same year, his former wife Georgie, who had filed for divorce as soon as allegations against her husband became known, spoke out for the first time. Claiming she knew nothing of Bob's infidelity, Georgie explained to a local Oregon newspaper, "...this shadow life made a mockery of my marriage, 25 of the prime years of my life, and a mockery of Bob's dedication to equality for women." 
Elected at just 19, Kansas State Representative Aaron Coleman was making headlines in 2020 for all the wrong reasons. Journalists weren't writing about his historic win or progressive policies, but rather about his history of poor and illegal treatment of the women in his life. In middle school, a mere seven years before he won office, Coleman admitted on social media and to the AP that he'd been involved in a revenge porn scheme. He reportedly blackmailed a young woman when she wouldn't share explicit images of herself with him. Once the accusations came to light, Coleman admitted to The Intercept. It's just so horrendous. The fact that I have such a compassionate platform shows I've, I've changed. But unfortunately, it seems Coleman hadn't changed at all. In August 2020, a recent ex-girlfriend of his came forward with claims that he had physically assaulted her the previous year. She shared text messages that corroborated her claims, and a friend backed up her version of events. Coleman's former partner hasn't formally pressed charges, but her alleged account, combined with facts from Coleman's past, make it clear that this politician hasn't changed course on his mistreatment of women. Coleman was arrested in November 2021 for traffic violations, and in January of 2022, the Kansas Democratic Party moved to suspend Coleman from the party for two years, according to Fox 4. In 2021, Sean Parnell was running for a Senate position in Pennsylvania. The Trump-backed candidate was a favorite in the competitive race and a darling with GOP constituents. But that was before domestic violence allegations completely derailed his campaign. It all came to light when Parnell had to appear in family court amid divorce proceedings from his now ex-wife Lori Snell. According to her, Parnell had frequently been abusive to both her and her children over the course of at least eight years. On two separate occasions before the family court appearance, Snell had filed for protective orders against Parnell and was now seeking full physical and legal custody of the couple's three children. Eventually, the judge granted her the request, ruling that Snell was the more credible witness, according to the New York Times. Parnell flippantly claimed that the abuse never happened, telling the Philadelphia Inquirer of his wife, it just wasn't a good relationship. This is heartbreaking because it did not have to be this way. He was eventually forced to suspend his campaign. Still, not all has been lost for the former politician. His girlfriend, whom he allegedly began seeing while still very much married to Snell, has stood by his side. We're hopeful for Snell's sake that the divorce can be finalized quickly so she can move on to greener pastures. If you or someone you know is dealing with domestic abuse, you can call the National Domestic Violence Hotline at 1-800-799-7233. You can also find more information, resources, and support at their website.